Hi. So on this episode, we're going to talk about our birthing stories, um, share some insight with all of you guys on how some of those things happen because every birth is different. Yep. I You can have 10 kids and, you know, you'll say each of those births are different. Yep. Um, every pregnancy is different. Regardless. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Every pregnancy is different. Mm-hmm. Um, not to like dive in, but I remember my doctor. I want to dive in. My doctor had asked me when I was pregnant what my um, birthing plan was. And I straight up told him I did not have a plan because I, it was my first baby. I've only had one kid and I didn't know how my body was going to handle giving birth. I didn't know what was going to happen for me. And I'm a very much so like, um, we'll see how it goes and we'll roll with whatever happens type yeah, person. Go with the flow. And especially like if I don't know how my body's going to handle something. So I told him, I was like, I don't have a plan because I'm just going to go with whatever I need to do in the moment. And he's like, that's a terrible plan. Why would you do that? Well, he, sometimes it's more stressful trying to stick to a plan yeah. and going against what your body needs he you was, to do. He was very adamant that I should have an epidural though. Um, and I had told him that I w- wanted to avoid one because of how poorly i reacted to needles i'm not a big needles person i don't like them um and i was straight up afraid of of the epidural and he was very very adamant he was like you you need to have one and i ended up getting one but he was like you should have one like when you get to the hospital just straight up tell them that like when you get there that you want an epidural right away and i'm like why would he do that he was weird i mean like women have been giving birth without like anesthetics yeah for thousands of years granted some of those women passed away in childbirth mm-hmm. like there are complications yes but this is you know like we're still made to be able to do that yeah that's what our bodies are pain. for i mean and they're excluding the women whose bodies are not made for it because there are some women where like their hips are not like wide enough for childbirth or I don't even know. There's there's Sometimes multiple. that's not even on the women. That's on the man that impregnated her. Yeah. And his genes just run bigger. Yeah. Because I remember my aunt was originally told that she shouldn't have kids because her, I think her p- p- pelvis, I don't remember, something was too narrow. Mm-hmm. And she was going to have like complications giving birth. And yeah. she had two kids. She had a boy and a girl. Naturally? Yeah. See, yeah, look at that. Well, I don't know. I don't know if she had an epidural or not. Oh, I don't I mean, know, but as far as coming yeah. out the natural way, I think so. Yeah, um, without having to be sliced. <laughs> um, yeah, and well, I mean, like when you go through a pregnancy, if any of you are listening who have not been pregnant yet, um, yet, <laughs> um, if you choose if you to are... not have kids at all, that is great, if and you that's are pregnant your choice. Or planning to become pregnant. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you are growing a baby your hips will get sore and they will literally start to spread open and crack. Mm -hmm. Your entire pelvis does shifting and breaking and cracking and repairing itself over and over and over again. That's why the more kids you have, it seems like the wider your hips get. And that's completely accurate. Yep. They do get wider because Um. essentially, um, like the majority of the time, I'm so sorry. Most <laughs> I made a sound and I know my microphone picked it up. And so I was trying to move off from it. But then I started thinking about how funny it was going to sound without knowing. Leave it to the ADHD so sorry. girl to Done. get distracted by a sound that she herself made. It doesn't help that I'm exhausted. I yes. had a long day. And I've got, I There's still have going so much you. shit to do before mm-hmm. tomorrow. <sighs> yes. Anyways. You got a lot on your plate right now. Um, but uh, usually your babies tend to get bigger the more the more you have. Mm-hmm. Um, that was very true in my case. I've had three pregnancies, three babies, um, given birth three times, and... The first one was the smallest. Second one, um, at least uh, she was a pound bigger. And then my most recent one was 10 pounds. And I had to get cut open for him. Mm -hmm. It ended up being an emergency. 
um, which was very disappointing because after having two babies naturally, mm-hmm. I was very frustrated. It was like with a badge myself. of honor. I had yeah. three kids naturally. I did it. Go me, woman yeah. power. Well, I mean, the first one I had an epidural, but still, well, he no. came out yeah. the natural way. Um, <clears throat> but well, to know that your body can handle that yeah. and then to be told your body's not going to do that because it can't handle it now mm-hmm. is like a slap in the face yeah i'm so sorry <laughs> look at you over there you know, <laughs> i'm cracking up at my own joke that i didn't even get to make <laughs> you know what we should do instead of saying i had my kid naturally we need to say my kid went down the slip and slide <laughs> Because it's like a fun little sensor. Yeah. I had, a, I had two slip and slide kids. <laughs> two slip and slide kids. Slip and slide. I hope that sticks. <laughs> I wish they would have come out that fast, though. Like, some Mine did. couple of them were just like, okay, time Dude. for you to go. I, my Mine was a slip and slide for sure. That sounds Damn. weird. Uh, <laughs> no, she like she came right out of there. She was ready. Like Damn. it took her forever to be ready, but when she yeah. was ready, she was ready. Mm-hmm. Um, with my first, I did have an epidural, and for me personally, um, I hated it. I hated every second of it. The epidural was the worst. This is the worst. I think honestly, your epidural story is what made Dylan afraid of me having an epidural. Really? Yeah. He could, I think you were the reason why he didn't want me to have an epidural. Listen, I don't want this to like scare anybody, but um I mean, again, cuz again, everybody's body's different. Yeah. There's some people that are like, "Hey, I fucking loved the epidural." Yeah, it was my great epidural had, was great. Yeah. Yeah. Mine uh back pain for uh years in the injection site. Um did they have an issue injecting it into you? I don't think so. I don't actually remember. I think because um, we so long ago. we have different epidural stories, which will yeah, which will kind of balance each other out. I feel like yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> yucky. So the epidural needle is very big. I mean, for anyone who's afraid of needles, I didn't even see the needle. If you're smart about it, they can, like, they'll let you know that yeah. the anesthesia team is coming in. Yeah. Um, you can look away. You can look yeah. away. They numb the shit out of you so you don't have to feel it going in. Really? But it is a bit, yeah. You felt it? Fuck yeah, I felt it. <gasps> oh my God. I felt mine. And but you said was... yours was a good story. I had a great, I did not have a great in, in, interjection when they were putting it in me. Mm-hmm. Afterwards, it was great. It was awesome, and I didn't feel any pain afterwards. And I had because for me, mm-hmm. I ended up having to get an epidural almost very last minute because I, like I said, I originally did not want it. Yeah, and I was trying the gas and air, mm-hmm. but the gas and air was making me very dizzy, and it wasn't helping. Yeah. And I felt really shitty, and I wasn't getting any sleep. So they were worried that when the time came, I wouldn't be able to push because I, w- again, I wasn't getting sleep. Uh, so they were like, you that should. your body will push the baby out regardless. Right. But they were like, you should probably get an epidural. That way you can at least get some semblance of, of sleep. Cause I was getting mm-hmm. none. Yeah. Um, and I said, okay, we signed the papers and they came in. Um, and I remember I was sitting on the bed and dylan was holding my hand and he was in front of me and the anesthesia was behind me and at the time because i had to be started on pitocin yeah my contractions were very inconsistent for t- like time wise uh-huh. but they were very very strong so my contractions were happening every two minutes or so but they i was only one really centimeter strong. dilated they were probably really strong because it was your first baby. Yes. And it was your the first right. time your body is going through And this. I would also like to add that I had had no contractions prior to my water breaking. I was at work for an entire day of work. I think I left half an hour early because I had back pain. Uh-huh. 
and yeah, my water neighbor. was leaking all day and I didn't know it because I thought my she was just sitting really heavy that day. Yeah. I had eaten a big lunch. I didn't realize my water was breaking slowly through the day. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden at like seven o'clock at night, my water broke and I'm like, I think we need to go to the hospital. So we went, mm -hmm. got there at like nine o'clock at night. They started me on Pitocin because I had had no contractions at mm -hmm. all whatsoever. So when they were giving me the epidural, they were trying to insert it and I was having contractions. Yeah, and they can't do that while nope, you're contracting. He missed twice, finally Ugh. got it in. Um, only half of it worked. So they had to give me another one. So oh it my would God. work. I had four or five, like up my spine, mm -hmm. you could feel it like scabs, <gasps> like little dots of scabs going up and down my spine, like four or five of them because they, ha they had missed and then it hadn't worked a few times. Oh, so God. it was so painful for me. And I remember Dylan kind of started crying because he had never heard yeah. me in that much kind of pain. He's like, I, I never, I've never heard you make those sounds before. And it scared me. And I felt, I was like, and I knew I couldn't help you. And there's, I, it just it hurt me because I, cause you were hurting. Yes. And I remember the anesthesia had asked me if I was because I was like I was like screaming he was yeah. like are you screaming because of the contractions or the epidural and I'm like motherfucker both <laughs> both of these things are hurting me right now because yeah. I'm not I'm not dilated enough to have this kid but my contractions yeah. are all the fuck over the place you're sticking a, and it's not like it's a shot it's not like they put the needle in and they give you a shot and then oh, it's fine yeah. they stick it in and it's like an IV because yeah, you have a little button you can there. press to give you more yeah um and I was hooked up to like so many different things because I had the epidural yep. and then they had my heartbeat going and they had my IVs going mm -hmm. and then for her the, heartbeat for the first half, her yeah. heartbeat was across my belly, mm -hmm. but she kept kicking it off. So they had to do it inside on her oh, head. Oh, yep. So That's I was hooked up worst. to that too. And it was awful. Like going to and from the bathroom was awful because they had they had to put it on her head because they kept thinking they had lost her they kept thinking she was dying even yeah. though she was just like get this thing off me uh, yeah well and at that point you know she's about to be birthed yeah so she's already getting uncomfortable your body is mm -hmm. pushing her into different positions yeah um that's what contractions do yeah they push the baby into the position the baby is supposed to be in um and so she's kind of already getting uncomfy yeah get it going into distress like this isn't comfy i don't like this yeah i haven't had to do anything like this like get stuff off of me yeah. i feel pressure here and there and and you know they start to feel crowded and like the body's contracting around the baby and yeah um so your baby does get frustrated in there yep. too so that's um, my epidural story mine i i know the epidural you know, he went in one time with the epidural and it was fine. Yeah. Um, you know, later on after I had a lot of scar tissue that built up oh. around the injection site, which hurt my back a lot. Yeah. That hurt my back. And then also what the epidural did to my spine. Yeah. In my back. Um, so after that, I do remember you know, the, the pain of the contractions went away and I was able to go to sleep because it was very late at night. I had been contracting all day the day before. I was already three days overdue. Yeah. Um, and I was refusing You were three days overdue and mine came three days early. <laughs> That's funny. That is funny. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> we go to the hospital. I was all, like, I was in so much pain, just like bawling. Worst pain ever. I was only dilated to four. My water hadn't even broken yet. Yeah. At that point. Um, it finally broke on its own after we were at the hospital for over an hour. Um, but <clears throat> they were also, they were going to send me home too. I was three days overdue. Really? I was contracting all day. I was in like the worst pain. I was dilated to four and my water hadn't broken on its own. And they said, well, if your water doesn't break within the next hour, we'll just send you home. And I was like, Really? Really? Yeah, that sounds right, which is stupid, but they do that all the time. They do. If I guarantee you, like, I mean, if my water had broken, we would not have gone to the hospital because I wasn't contracting. There would have been no need to. Right. But I saw so what I was going to say is irrelevant. Never mind. 
Um, Dumbass. Well, I was just taken back taking by that because I was already overdue. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it was just, it was a horse. And, you know, while I was awake and in active labor, mm-hmm. I could still feel one of my legs. I could, there was like a pinch nerve. Yeah. In between, like, in between my leg and my pelvis yeah and honestly that was the worst pain ever that was that was so much worse my second child unmedicated natural birth i remember and it that. was less painful than the pinch nerve in my leg during my first birth God. that was absolutely awful um and if you've never had an epidural you cannot walk after like most yeah. of the time you yeah. can't get up and walk after having a baby anyways, but you literally you have to you... wait for it to wear off. Cause yes. I remember the, my nurse, when I was right after I had my baby, when they moved me into the maternity ward and not labor and delivery, um, the nurse that was on duty, she had told me that if you, when you're ready to take a shower or if you need help going to the bathroom, just, you know, let one of us know and we'll come help you. And I was, um, I needed to go to the bathroom. So I called somebody in and I think she was new. Because she seemed just very, uh, like, it was a different nurse completely. I'm new uh, in town. But I told her, I was like, I um, I just need some help going to the bathroom. And I was told that, like, I would need help just in case because I had an epidural. And mm-hmm. she just seemed kind of confused as to, like, whatever. And I was like, she helped me, though. She was really sweet. <laughs> I really liked the hospital we went to. Um, I would 100% go back there again. They were super awesome. And it, I mean, it That's helped nice. that I had really good insurance too yeah. for my job. Mm-hmm. I miss that. I love my job. Mm-hmm. I don't have that job anymore, but I still work for the company. So yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. Yeah. Epidurals. Um, they can be great. They can also be awful. Yeah. Um, like I said, two years at least after I felt back pain all the time. And I've always said, after like i always have said after that i would never do an epidural again i'd much rather go through you know a handful of hours of painful unmedicated birth than to have to go through years of back pain yeah like it's and i did next second kid unmedicated um i did do the uh gas yeah for a bit because i think the gas it's just the gas helped keep me calm and like collected but it doesn't it, it didn't help my pain at all it just kind of mm-hmm. like I, it made me just really dizzy and i was like i don't like how this is making me feel honestly i don't really think the gas helped me um but i had the mask over my mouth and oh. it just muffled my screams so i think oh. it was better for everybody that i <laughs> had that so funny um, was yours like attached to your head because i had to hold mine up yeah i had to hold mine oh, okay. on my face um I also, they had to specifically tell me that I was the only person allowed to hold that on my face, too. Did they tell you that? Yeah, I had to, like, sign a whole waiver for it. Yeah, me too. I think it's to make sure that nobody's, like, drugging you. Because you can easily... Yeah. You can easily overdose from that shit, I think. Or maybe not overdose, but, like... Wow, what a way to die. I know. (laughs) I would love that. In labor, inhaling, yeah, gas and air, whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, laughing gas. Yeah. Send me home with a tank of that shit. (laughs) Um, but so second one, very painful. And it also, it was a lot more painful because, um, it had been eight years since, or seven years since I had had my first. So it was kind of like my body was going through everything all over again, but, um, the, the contractions leading up to it were much less painful the second time around. Um, second baby is definitely easier, at least for me. Um, hopefully it's like that for everybody else. Um, or for anyone who's had multiple kids who's listening. Um, hopefully you didn't have to go through too much trauma with your next kid. Yeah. Or the one after. Um, <clears throat> birth trauma is real for sure. Um, that's why it took so long for me to have a second kid. Um, but after she was out, the pain went away immediately. I didn't, um, I didn't rip. 
I didn't. Oh, you nothing. didn't tear? Yeah. Me neither. Didn't tear. Um, and that was amazing because I had an episiotomy with the first one, which is where they cut you. Wasn't yours? You? They didn't tell you they were doing that and you didn't consent to it either? They, the doctor said, all right, well, I'm going to have to cut you now. Um, and this is an episiotomy. And then he cut me. And that was it. It they was like ask a three you? second thing. You, you know what's no, fucked up is most women me. have to explicitly say, do not do this to me. Because yes. sometimes they do that to you and don't even say anything. Yep. And that's why and you that's have to have a very traumatic plan. for you. That's, that's, that's so traumatic for your body. Mm -hmm. So if you do anything with a birth plan, do your research on an episiotomy. Do your research on things that they usually do in a hospital while you're giving yep. birth. Do you want Pitocin? Do you not want Pitocin? Yeah. Look at how that affects, has affected people. Look at um, what an episiotomy is. Um, because after my personal experience with it, I would never no. sign off on that I ever remember again. that was the one thing we did with our birth plan was to explicitly say no episiotomy. Because yes. I didn't want to have to go through that. And I mean, my baby was small anyways. Yeah. I didn't need it. But right. you never know. Right. Well, and again... Sometimes they'll do anything just to get more money on your bill. Well, yeah. Because yeah. they can charge you for the episiotomy. They can because charge they you for anything. they have to stitch you back up after, too. Mm -hmm. um, but if, if you were to just let yourself rip down there, that skin is made to rip in yes. case it needs to. Yep. It is literally made up in such a way that... It's able to rip in a way that it can heal better. Yep. If you get an episiotomy, it's just a straight it's cut. It's forceful. It's yeah. not. And that doesn't do anything for that skin down there. Yeah. That skin can't heal the way it's made to heal when it's been cut instead of ripped. Yeah. Um. Either way, ripping is painful. <laughs> Being cut is painful. What is also painful is having stitches down there mm -hmm. and having to walk after. Yep. When you have an episiotomy, you cannot drive after. Um, it is similar to the rules that you have when you have a C-section. Um, you can't lift anything. You've had both. <laughs> yep. Um, I've had three completely different births, three completely different pregnancies. Mm -hmm. um, so I I've feel, got stories. I feel unexperienced. <laughs> I'm about to go have another kid. <laughs> I need some experience. <laughs> Y'all got any of that experience? <laughs> um, experience for sale. Experience for sale. Um, <clears throat> so there's that. Um, it does come with its own set of problems. If you've never heard of the dice, dice diapers, ice diapers that the oh, hospital makes. Dice they're, diapers. <laughs> they're definitely for, uh, tearing and ripping down there mm -hmm. um so that you can heal and they're amazing that um, was one thing i'm so glad i did instead of doing like uh the blood pads and stuff mm -hmm. i just wore diapers i wore adult diapers yes they were awesome yeah and they were so much more comfortable there's so and they much more, more convenient blood. I, that's the one thing I, I even like with my menstrual cycle mm -hmm. i hated wearing pads because i felt so disgusting wearing them yeah but those diapers if you are giving birth 100 and it's going to be a natural birth i 100 percent recommend wearing adult diapers and mm -hmm. not like a pad or anything yeah. um i also got from one of my mom's cousins she sent me a package that she ended up not using mm -hmm. and it was one of the freedom mom uh postpartum care packages and it yeah. had like a a foam in it and it was um a witch hazel foam and i put yes. that right on there which hazel, which hazel, <laughs> which hazel helps you heal up really nice. They've got like wipes and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, the hospital that I went to, they actually gave me little witch hazel wipes, which oh, were nice. awesome. I it was awesome. Um, but yeah, I I just would recommend diapers instead of just regular yeah. pads. Well, then also if you don't get the mesh underwear from the hospital because they do provide you yeah. lots of different things in the hospital. You really don't have to take much. Uh, yeah, all, every no. new mom is like, what do I need to take to the hospital? Honest to God, you do not have to take a lot. Yeah. You don't need to take your own peri bottle. You don't need to take your own this. Like the hospital will you know literally what, provide all of that for you. I would I would recommend getting one of the Freedom Mom peri bottles because it has the little angle on it. The ones in the hospital oh. don't. 
I, I didn't pre- know that. I significantly preferred the Freedom on Perry bottles because they had the angle on it, so it was easier to squeeze <clears> it and get it out. Whereas with the normal hospital Perry bottles, it's just the it's just like a ketchup bottle, oh. and it was so difficult to get the water at a decent angle to actually clean yes. me and, and relieve okay. me of pain. So I would recommend bringing a Freedom Mom Perry bottle I, instead of I using the hospital that. ones. Okay, that makes sense. I yeah. never got to use one of those, so um, I never knew that. Yeah. They're um, awesome. I love I love the Frida stuff in general. For your baby, for I'll I'll I mean you can I just have to it's whatever. We can link some of that too yeah. in the description. Yeah. Um definitely not sponsored. Oh no. <laughs> um, That'd be awesome. Just enjoyed. Um, <laughs> not sponsored, just loved. <laughs> <laughs> um but so there's that. Um there's articles out there on Pinterest. Um, if you're, you know, new to giving birth and you want to cover all the bases, you're like, I don't know if I'm going to tear, but in case I do, you can, there's recipes for ice diapers out yeah. there. Um, and it's literally like a baby's diaper with ice in it and aloe and yeah. witch hazel. It's any, like to just soothe everything down there. Yep. Um, also, Freedom Mom makes <laughs> ice packs to put in your underwear. Really? That have witch hazel on them. Oh my gosh. They That's have so fucking nice. everything. I love them so much. So if you don't want to make one, just go to go to Amazon and search up Freedom Mom Freedom postpartum Mom kits. Yeah. They've got a whole bunch still, of stuff. Like definitely link that yeah. shit for you so you can just go straight yeah. to it. Um so so there's that. I guess Freedom Mom has everything now. <laughs> They're awesome. I think everything we bought for our daughter is is Frida baby. Aw. So um my breastfeeding pillow is from Frida Mom. And it has like little pockets on the band mm-hmm. for the front and the back. And it has like little warming pads in it that Aww. you just like you snap it and it heats yeah. up and then you reboil it and it redoes it and then you snap it again and it heats up and you boil it and it resets it. Oh my gosh. It's, that is so cool. I love it. I didn't get to use it that often because she wasn't super comfortable on it, Mm -hmm. but honestly she would fall asleep on it and I would put her when she was like super little, I'd put her on it and then I'd play video games with my friends on my computer while she slept. Aww. It was nice. I I miss, I miss that. Yeah. I've been the young baby stage. Well, you miss for sure. It's less, honestly, it's, I, I've been going through this thing emotionally where I just miss my friends because yeah. I don't really get to talk to any of my friends anymore because we're all just in very different stages of life. Mm-hmm. Um, it's hard. Especially now that I've had a baby. I it don't can get... be lonely at times. Well, and it's like, and when I'm awake, they're, they're at work. Yeah. It's, and I'm a stay-at-home mom, mm-hmm. so I don't get to talk to them as often except for like one or two. Yeah. Motherhood, come, beginning your journey of motherhood can be very isolating. Yeah. Um, and that's why postpartum depression gets so bad. Um, postpartum anxiety and that's why if you have a friend who's a new mom check up on them oh religiously doing check up good, on them but for real just be like hey like shoot them a text say hey don't fucking lie to me are you doing okay mentally or just go over and help her with something while you talk to her honestly my best she- friend when she had her first baby i went over to her house to hang out with her um you know see her baby and stuff I, she had like piles of laundry in her living room. I just fucking started folding that shit. She's yeah. like, you don't need to do it. I'm like, I'm literally your best friend. I've yeah. been your best friend for 13 fucking years. I'm going to help you fold your yeah. laundry and help you get it put away. Like, I'll stay here and hold, you know, your baby while you go yeah. take a nap and or make like yourself make food. food or something. Yeah. Yeah. Like, just, you know show you care and help because it is hard especially for new moms yeah um where we there was a topic from like five minutes ago that i had something on and i I don't don't remember remember what it is um how long were you in labor for or how long were how long were you pushing for as well both um first one epidural numbs everything so i was pushing for a lot longer than what I needed to because okay. the doctors will always tell you to push when your body is actually not ready to push because your body will push I the didn't baby get that. out on its own. And that's why if you're considering not doing the epidural, 
it's helpful because you can actually feel what your body is trying to do mm-hmm. down below your waist. Yeah. Um, and I learned that with my second child. Mm-hmm. Here, the doctors are like, okay, you're dilated to 10, time to push. Sometimes your body is actually not ready to push yeah. just because you're dilated to 10. See, I didn't have that because I never dilated to 10. I was dilated to eight and my body was doing contractions to push her out. She was coming out before I was fully dilated. Mm -hmm. Um, And they actually had, they were telling me to not push because the doctor wasn't there. Like you can control that. I was like, she's coming. And I was like, she's ready. She's coming. And I remember I had, I had to go to the bathroom so bad. And I was telling her, I was screaming, she's coming. She's coming. I'm going to shit on the table. (laughs) Because I can feel myself pooping. And that's, that's and disgusting. But you know what? It's it's normal. It's natural. Because you are using the same muscles to push out a baby as you are to poop. They're the same muscle. So why wouldn't you poop pushing well, out a baby? Well, also, think about how big the baby is trying to come out. Anything yeah. that's next to that baby is getting forced out also. Yeah. Um, and it just, honestly... For any new mom that's like, I just don't want to shit when I'm... You can't control it. You For one, you can't control it. And two, every single doctor that has delivered a baby mm-hmm. has seen it already. You know and what? And you know what? They have a tub. <laughs> <laughs> they have a tub right there. Everything that comes out that's not the baby, they immediately scrape mine, it right into that tub. Mine had... She had... um like paper not paper towel but like a like a pad yeah ready underneath me to catch stuff and she literally dylan saw she he didn't see me poop but he saw her catch it crumple it up and throw it away and then go back for the baby yeah they do it so so fast i didn't even realize i had pooped by the time she had thrown it away most of the time you don't you know you don't know that you poop at all um but i i was in i was in labor for almost technically 24 hours because my water started jesus christ my water oh, yeah. started breaking at like noon the day before yeah. the day before um and i was technically in labor for 26 ish hours mm-hmm. and i only pushed for 20 minutes and she was out but she was a small baby she was six pounds yeah. four ounces and 19 inches long well, again that's also probably why your body didn't need to dilate to yeah 10. because she wasn't big enough to right. need t- all the 10 right um and that goes into my third birth um he was measuring very big mm-hmm. and i was still like oh my body has done this twice already like it my body what can it's totally doing. Do it. they're like hey listen he is very big um and he might get shoulder dysplasia coming out oh um or he might get stuck. We just need you to know this. Yeah. And honestly, like, it really got me, like, emotional. Because I was like, I know my body can handle this. Yeah. Like, But also, I those really were two very different babies, you know? Yeah. Um. But, and also, going from my second child to my third child, there was not a whole lot of time in between. Yeah. So, my body was already, like hey, we literally did this less than two years ago. Yeah. We can do it again. We're already even bigger this time than yeah. we were last time. Like, we're ready. Um, And I was just like, I know. I trust my body to be able to do this and handle this. Yeah. Um, But I never went into labor on my own. Yeah. Nothing could get me to go into labor. I never. You should I have ate those jalapenos one- dad offered you, I asshole. Did. <laughs> I started eating a lot of spicy foods. Did I really? did all the things to get you to go into labor. Yeah. Um, And none of it ever worked. My body never wanted to go into labor. And it was getting to the point where they're like, okay, you're kind of getting close to 42 weeks. This yeah. is kind of getting dangerous. Like you need to be induced. And I was like, okay. So I got on the induction list. They finally called me and I said, okay, I guess we're going in and getting induced today. Yeah. Um, and it, that was like in the evening. It was like five o'clock. Yeah. Um, when we finally got to the hospital. And um, so they were doing all that. Of course, I got all hooked up to everything. Um, heartbeat was great. But, you know, they're like, hey, we're kind of scared. Like, we just need you to be aware that this is something that happens. Um, so I still wanted to go through the natural birth anyways, because I had to be induced. 
they had to put me on a Pitocin. Yeah. And the way my body reacted to the Pitocin um, was, you know, my body's like, oh, wow, that's right. We're supposed to give birth. Let's go. It's time. Let's fucking go right now. So my, (laughs) and this was what made it way more painful than the other ones. Yeah. Is I was only dilated to six and he's a big baby and my body like reacted too good to the Pitocin and kept trying to push him out at six. So my cervix swelled up Mm -hmm. because so much pressure was getting put on my cervix when it wasn't even open all the way. Yeah. And because it swelled up, it closed up. Yeah. And they're like, um... You might need to have a C-section because he can't come out. Yeah. And then his heart rate dipped. Yeah. And they're like, oh, now it's an emergency Yeah, C-section. now we have to give you a C-section. Yes. Yeah. And bless my husband. I feel so bad for him in that moment because when you, like, thinking about it, when you hear your wife has to have an emergency C-section yeah. and your baby's heart rate dropped. Yeah. Um. You're like, oh my god. Yeah. And you then start panicking a little bit because I had to go into an operating room. They said you cannot come. Oh. They looked at him and said you can't come. And it's because they needed to get me yeah. out first and get me all prepped. Yeah. Before anyone could come back and right. scrub him in. Um. But literally everyone took me out, rushed me into the you know downstairs into the room. Yeah. And um left him there in the room all by himself oh to just cry and be terrified oh no and i'm like honestly i would have been a mess if that yeah. was me i would have been like oh my god am i, I can gonna only, see my wife again I can am i gonna see, see my baby if dylan was in that position he would have probably fought some doctors because yeah. he would have been pissed like that's my that's my wife and that's my baby and right. i'll be damned if i'm not going with her he would have he would have probably punched somebody because he's yep. a, he's an angry guy yes. like he's got a very calm demeanor but deep down he's an angry person oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah for sure which i love about but him. my husband like immediately like they were like you gotta stay here and he was like already starting to cry mm. like when i was like leaving and telling him bye oh, no. and i was like oh my god i'm so sorry and you know like later of course he got scrubbed in he yeah. was ready to go um but and, like that first initial yeah yeah and i you know i was on the operating table i didn't see him i just felt his hand on my face and i was like yep that's my husband Aww. my husband's here with me um i i probably would have cried <clears throat> if if i was on having an emergency c-section and i didn't see dylan but i felt yeah. his hand i would have started i because i'm a crier yeah well <laughs> That's I, my had, cancer move. I had the spinal block oh um so my body was like doing so many different things because i was being yeah. cut open um and that's a fun thing um you can get the epidural for a c-section you can also get a spinal block yeah and the spinal block was amazing yeah <laughs> um it's literally like they just stuck something in my back to just yeah. prevent any of my nerves from feeling anything right um below my waist and i was like this is great it makes you shake uncontrollably though oh i oh imagine um, um get out of my head um <laughs> but uh it that it was so hard because it was my body was literally trying to push a 10 pound baby out of swollen yeah s- barely six centimeter cervix mm-hmm while i was going in there and they were trying to they almost gave me the epidural not quite though because i kept um having contractions yeah so they did the spinal block it worked great um the anesthesiologist was awesome they're like do you want the clear curtains so you can see um or do do you just want the curtains that you can't see through so like i could see them cut me i was like i would i would nope if Regardless if I could feel it or not, if I were to see what's happening to my body, my brain would make me think I'm feeling it. Yeah. Like, I know it would. So my, I was like, I don't want to see that. My problem is, because I was supposed to have a C-section. I don't know if you remember, because my daughter was breech. She was upside oh, down. I don't remember that. Yeah, she was upside down mm-hmm. um, 
they had checked me at like two like no, a I few do. weeks before she flipped right before yeah and she literally like she they said okay she's breached we're going to schedule you for a c-section um and then next week when you come into your appointment we'll check it one more time blah 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 so we had it all scheduled and ready and i was like okay she's coming on this day because i wanted to do mm-hmm. i was really hoping she was going to come on the 12th because oh, right. my mom's birthday is a 12 my birthday is a 12 so i was like how cool would that be to have three generations of oldest girls have 12 birthdays yes so i wanted to schedule her c-section for the 12th mm-hmm. but it was a sunday and they don't do they don't schedule things on saturdays and sundays oh and i was pissed yeah and so, that's the day that you actually went into labor too yes but yes she didn't... wanted she wanted to yeah she wanted she started to um but she was like psych i had a i had scheduled her c-section for the ninth instead because i was looking at the the astrology stuff for that day i was like hand picking her astrology placement (laughs) the planets look really good on this day it was mostly just like her moon i was just i really just wanted to pick her moon sign what sign did you want i don't remember that's my problem oh (laughs) hey fuck if i know um (laughs) But she ended up starting to come on the 12th and she got here on the 13th. Um, but uh, she ended up flipping last yeah. minute. So they were like, okay, well, they we're going to we're gonna cancel your stuff. But I remember thinking when they told me she was upside down that um, I was, <laughs> my first thought was, well, like daughter, like mother, because I was upside down. But they oh, didn't know okay. I was upside down because of the technology at the time. Yeah. So I, my mom had to have an emergency C-section with me because. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. So that was fun. <sighs> yeah. I was like, wow, that's kind of cool. And just for it to <laughs> not be, but it was fun. Uh, almost. Yeah. Cause I will, I remember they were, um, he was feeling around and he was telling me that her head was down here. Um, yeah, and I'm poking, lower. I'm poking my below your belly button. Yeah, below of. my belly button, but like on the right side of my body. Yeah. And then her feet were up on the left side of my belly by mm-hmm. my boob. And he was telling me that. And I was like, I know because she kicks lower. And he's like, Well, you're probably yeah. just feeling her arms and blah blah. I was like, No, it feels like her feet. But it was what sucked for me was that I never got big enough to actually explicitly feel or even see body parts because I had uh-huh. a very small baby bump because she was a small baby. Yeah. So I was telling him, like, I really think she's just kicking me. It doesn't feel like arms. It doesn't feel like a head. And he was yeah. like, well, no, she's not upside down. So you're okay. Just for the next week <laughs> to have an ultrasound. So they get check. And yeah. she's upside down. Like I told them Fuck she you. was. Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you. And I'm like, I fucking told you guys. And even Dylan, yeah. Dylan was trying to give them the benefit of the doubt, too. And I'm like, I really don't think she's, you know, the right way up. I really think she's upside down. Yeah. Well, it is your body, and you're the one that feels it every day. Yeah, you're the like, one she's kicking my bladder. She makes me pee all the time. Yeah. I have heartburn from this bitch. No, like- you can definitely <laughs> feel your baby's body parts and where they're at. I remember with my first, I could literally feel where his butt was, where his knees were, his feet. <gasps> See, I, I did, knew exactly what I never, positions he was in. All I the never time. got that, and I wish I did. I remember other women were like wait till you can like see their hands and i would see videos of like hands coming out of the belly or whatever i was so excited for that kind of stuff i was excited for dylan to like raspberry my belly and spook her and you'd see her jump i never got any of that because of how small the belly i had Mm -hmm. i could reach my toes the whole time i could put my own shoes on the whole time i could touch Uh. the ground the whole time and a lot of women would say oh that must be so nice but i I feel like I got cheated out of a pregnancy experience. <laughs> I really do. Um, well, you are going to have more anyways. So. I know. Maybe and those I'll get ones bigger will then. be different. Yes. I mean, look at my last one. Oh, my God. I, I was huge and he was huge. I and hope, I could see his feet everywhere. And... I hope I don't have the morning sickness that I had the first time around because that was awful. I had really bad morning sickness. I Because my... my co-workers at guitar center felt bad for me yeah because they were all men they didn't know what i was going through and i was the first pregnant woman they'd ever worked with except for like two of the guys yeah but they just didn't they were so helpful though they were so sweet even like even drunk men are like yeah i threw up once i'm going home yeah it's like drunk women are like nah i can still party right 
and that's what I we love are. you. Yeah, and that's how we are. Like when we're sick too. Like yes, we feel terrible. Yeah, but we push through. Yep. Um, you know, we're just expected to work through our morning yeah. sickness. Um, my morning sickness was always worse with boys mm-hmm. than with the one girl I had. I had COVID in my first trimester with my daughter and yes. I still didn't throw up. I remember that. And I still didn't feel as bad as I did with the morning sickness with my other two. Well, you had the stomach flu with your last one too. Yep. Yeah. And I had to go to the ER mm-hmm. to get an IV because I was so dehydrated. Yeah. I couldn't imagine. Um, that. Uh, that was. I feel so bad for him in there because of my yeah. stomach clenching. I remember how worried I was for him because you had the stomach flu. Yeah. I was like, I hope that doesn't like. Right. Because I, I, I don't know how that shit works. I was like, I hope that doesn't like yeah. goof anything well, up with him. I had food poisoning with my second when I was pregnant with her. And you did? Was, yeah. I oh. had to leave work. Like, I was like, oh, my gosh, I feel so sick right now. Mm. And I was, like, what, eight months pregnant at the time. Uh, and my coworker's like, just go home. And so I was like, hey, I'm going to throw up. I threw up all over in my car on the way home. Oh, like, I called no. my husband when I was leaving. I was like, if something's wrong. I feel so sick right now. I'm coming home. And he's like, okay, because he had the day off that day. Yeah. And I turned the corner, and I put my hazards on, and I literally – threw up all over the car oh. i had to open the console and throw up in there because i didn't have anything to throw up in yeah so i was just like i need to throw up in this thing to just contain it yeah violently throwing up mm-hmm. but and of course i'm like oh my gosh i hope this doesn't do anything to my daughter this is so yeah. awful and then i was got get home throwing up there just non-stop and you know bless my husband again he goes out and cleans the entire car out yeah cleans all the puke and everything just didn't even like ask then came into the bathroom and sat with me and rubbed my back the entire time so i'm like jesus christ i remember the first time dylan was home and i had had morning sickness i throw up very violently like it, because mm-hmm. my body's trying to force it out of me. Yeah. And at that moment, I was throwing up nothing except for stomach acid. Ugh, so it was painful. And mm-hmm. I remember I started throwing up and he stomach came rushing vial. into the bathroom. Ugh. He was like, oh, my God, what's going on? Are you OK? Do you need anything? And I'm like, I'm leaning because I would go. I would throw up in the sink because yeah. I hate throwing up in the toilet because then it splashes back in your face. Yeah, it's gross. Yeah. So I would I would turn on the water for the sink and just throw up in the sink. Yeah. Um, and I'm leaning over the sink and I'm like, I'm fine. I don't need actually you want to hold my hair for me? <laughs> Cause I was like, I don't want to fucking do it. But he was it's, my throwing up scared him because he'd never heard me throw up before. Yeah. Um and if it's violent, like you're making noises and everything. Well and it it sucked because I think at that time, um our water softener had like there was something funky with the water softener so our water smelled like rotten eggs oh of course that and makes it worse. Too. i had been trying to stick it out and i told my landlord that it was broken and um he was like well we'll send somebody out blah 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 i was like you need to send somebody out right now because it's triggering my morning sickness the smell of the water is making me sick i can't brush my teeth i can't wash my face i can't fucking take a shower because I throw up every goddamn time I take it. I try to be clean. Yeah. I cannot do this and I have to go to work. So you need to send somebody out as soon as possible because I am sick of throwing up. Mm-hmm. And he sent somebody out, I think, the same day. But I was like, I'm not, I am yeah. not spending. Not fiddle fucking around with this right. shit. I'm pregnant. I'm moody. I'm throwing up. I don't want to deal with this egg smelling ass water yeah like gross. you fix that shit right now and the the um maintenance guy he sent was really nice so that was nice that um i think i don't think i've ever been more demanding than i was in that moment because <laughs> i'm a pretty even feel when your body is feeling that terrible and you're going through that kind of like distress yeah. you're like fuck this i need this fixed now yeah um and i get that and that's why you're moody when you're pregnant because you need to be demanding yeah. you need to advocate for yourself because it's not just for you anymore it's for you and the baby right um but that uh morning sickness can sometimes come up in stomach bile yeah. and that's disgusting and probably the worst part of morning sickness um is throwing up stomach bile um because you're not always gonna have food to throw up it's just gonna be the acid and um 
that can be so terrible and disgusting. Um, when you're growing a baby, baby sucks a lot of the calcium out of your body. Yeah. Because baby needs bones too. So your teeth will start to decay. And then also while you're throwing up, if you cannot brush your teeth and leave all that stomach acid on your teeth, it only further de- makes them decay. Yeah. That's why most of the time your doctors will say you need to go to a dentist since you're pregnant. You need your teeth checked. Um, Three and this is why out of my four molars decayed while I was pregnant and I had yeah. to get all three of them pulled. I've got one molar in my mouth right now. Yeah, I've had uh, first pregnancy and second pregnancy. Both of those, I've had a tooth just break right out of my face. Yep. Yep. Um, like and yeah, they yeah. were they were just started they started decaying and then they just started breaking. Like yeah. pieces would come out in my food and I'm like, this is yep delicious for me. Mm, yeah. I love broken tooth in love my fettuccine. <laughs> um. But uh, so that happens. Um, and that's why I have this theory. That's why um, way back, you know, in whatever time period, all time periods, I guess, um, is why there would always be like, you know, that stereotype. Oh, that's just the toothless hag. Like, she probably I had a bet lot of that babies. bitch had 10 kids and lost all of her teeth because yeah. of growing babies. Yeah. 100%. And she probably looks like a hag because she had 10 kids. Yeah. She's I would tired. Too. She's stressed I out. Would she's too. done with life. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, so, yeah, toothless hags aren't just there because they let themselves go. Yeah. They probably had kids. Yeah. And that's what got them to that point. Um, so, yeah, pregnancy does a lot to your body. Um, <sighs> birthing is always fun. Oh. I actually, I wouldn't mind doing it again. I didn't have a terrible experience, but I feel like I had a great experience because I had my mom and my partner with me. Yeah. Both of which are very even. They have, um, they both have pretty good, like, labor placements. Yeah. So they're very, very even balanced people. Yeah. Well, also, it's just, it's nice to have your support people with you. Yes. It really is. And I feel so bad for the women out there who the person that's supposed to be their support person, like their partner is not good support at all. I cannot imagine going through birthing a child and having my significant other also be a child. Yes. Not support me. I, my, uh, son's dad who I'm not with, um, that was not a good relationship. Like we were just young and stupid people back then. He was actually still a good support person in that yeah. moment in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, he didn't support me with a whole lot of other stuff, but in that moment, he did. Good. And I was still grateful for him for that. Mm-hmm. I still am because um, he is actually genuinely a good person. Yeah. He just used to make terrible decisions. Yeah. Um, you can be a good person and make shitty decisions. Yeah. Um, but, it, you know, shitty decisions are still your fault regardless. Oh, yeah. Take accountability. Uh, right. Um, but, and that sucks, like, you know, just the men that bring their gaming systems to the hospital while That would piss me off. F- I would break that thing so fast. Yeah, me too. Oh my god. I would try what to- What if I get bored? You're fucking there to deliver a baby. You're bored? You're, You're bored. bored? I just went through X amount of hours of labor. Yeah. I'm in pain. I'm bored. I'm bored of your fucking attitude. So sorry that my labor bores you. God. I don't know what to tell you there, guy. Fuck Maybe off. Maybe wear a condom next time. <laughs> you are the reason I'm here. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Fuck off. Um, God. But it's it can be such a traumatic experience. And, um, you know, just make sure your support people are there with you. It really does yeah. mean the world to have them there um and it might also mean the world f- for them yeah like it might mean the world that you ask them to be there i know for my mom she was just she loved that i asked her she yeah. loved being there she felt so honored to be there with me and you know what she'll be there the next time i have a kid mm-hmm. i think for every single every time i have a kid it is always going to be my mom and my my <laughs> don't say brother my I, brother. I almost did. My mom and My your brother. brother. 
<laughs> my mom and my Dylan <laughs> are always going to be there because they made a really good team. Yeah. They really did. And they supported me. I remember after I got my epidural, I finally got some semblance of sleep. And I woke up a little bit because I, I felt a little bit of one of my contractions because I ha- yeah. I only had like two halves of a of a epidural. Mm-hmm. So it, it was like working, but yeah. almost not almost not barely. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, but I had woken up a little bit and I sleep with my hand tucked like right under my mouth. Oh, yeah. And I remember hearing my mom ask Dylan if I sleep like that all the time. And he said yes. And my mom said and I thought this this was so cute. My mom said, she still sleeps like she's sucking her thumb. Because I was a thumb sucker. Aww. And I remember, I think, I if I was a little bit more conscious for that, I probably would have cried a little bit. I'm a crybaby. <laughs> I cry all the time. I'm a crier. I cannot imagine me drunk. Because I guarantee you, like, I mean, I almost was one time. I, I've never been drunk. And I almost was one time. And I got so sad. I just went to bed. Because I was like, I'm not doing this. But I'd imagine. Moon. They it think sucks. Cancer, they, people think cancer sons, like, the cancer, like, yeah. cancer people are crybabies. They are not. Most cancers will cry when nobody's looking. Yeah. If they need to cry. Cancer moons will cry a lot. Well, and I, um, I've got my Cancer Moon and my Cancer North Node, and those are my only yeah. two water placements in my entire birth chart, and they are b- both in the 12th house. Yeah. So, I Look at am you. fucked. <laughs> Look at you go. Um, Emotion, too. I think that's one regret that I will always have for the rest of my life is my mom asked if she could be in the delivery room with my first. Yeah. And I said no. And I will never. Do you remember why you not... said no? I said no just because I'm a super independent person. Yeah. And I was like, ah, I don't need my mom here. Like, you know, whatever. It's fine. And I remember when she passed away, I thought about that and I was like, oh my God. If it was me, I would love to be in the delivery room yeah. with my daughter having her first baby. And it really would be such an honor to be there. Yeah. And to help her. And for my, like, knowing that my mom didn't get to experience that for how much she loved Loved her kids so much. Yeah. And she was so excited to be grandma. And this is like, I'm trying to not cry right now. And you've never actually really seen me full out, like, cry because of a memory or anything like that. This is one thing that if I think about it too long and too much, I will start bawling. Yeah. But this that's something I always regret. My throat's getting really tight right now. <laughs> um, and it just makes me so sad because I know she would have been so excited to be there just to help me. Yeah. For just – and to this day, I've never – seen a mo- like every mom loves her babies but for my mom to have had the babies that she had it was a blessing she loved us like more than anyone could love anything right and like well and it probably just... meant more to her too because she wasn't supposed to have you guys exactly she had such a different outlook on yes. life and her kids and stuff and I just like I think about that. I'm like, I wish she would have been there. Um, I really do. And I mean, if anyone's like thinking about that, and you have like a great relationship with your mom, um, I highly suggest at least thinking about having yeah. your mom be in the delivery room with you. Having a- even if it sounds embarrassing, like oh, I don't want my mom it's to see not, that. Though. Your mom birthed you. She changed your diapers. Like. <laughs> Your mom is a whole ass human being that's yep. literally been through everything. It's not embarrassing. No. Like you're more embarrassed just at the thought of those things than your mom would ever make you feel. Right. It also, I think it matters on what kind of energy your mom is going to bring too, you know? Yeah. Um, Cause like I said, my mom brought like a very cool collected calm energy some people's moms just have too much energy or they're oh, yeah. demanding or they're blah blah blah, blah. so it's like i would i would 
think about what kind of energy you want in your delivery room too. Mm -hmm. Um, I know there's a lot of women out there probably, ah, um, sorry, I felt like I just got stabbed in my oh. chest. It had nothing to do with my boob that I grabbed. It yeah. was more like in the, like literally underneath. Oh, weird. It was like a muscle tension. Anyways, um, I know there's a lot of women out there who are going through like their, their partner's mom wants to be there and is like very demanding about it. Yeah. Do not feel like you are obligated to have somebody in the delivery room because it's your baby. Yeah, it, that's and, a very intimate place yes, also for you. If, if people are going to be very insistent that they be there, have nobody there because yeah. the nurses will take yeah. anyone out that you don't want in there. They you make a whole list like, of people you don't... don't want in the delivery room with you and the nurses will be like your own personal bodyguards. Yeah. Um, it's part of their Even job. if it's your partner, you know? Yeah. You like people kick their partners out because they don't like how their partners yeah. are acting. Oh, I'd imagine. Um, but seriously, think like that's a big thing to think about too is what people are there with you because mm -hmm. you don't want somebody that's going to stress you out more because your yeah. body is already so stressed out. Also, I need to um say this real quick too before we go. Um, my first delivery, I'll of course I was very scared. I was very young, right? Was not prepared. Um, I you know epidural. I was so high on like drugs and everything um you know because the epidural really does it does a number on you um plus with how much pain you're in you're not thinking straight you're not thinking of anything so one of the things um to put in your birth plan is whether or not you're okay with medical students being in the room while you're giving birth um i don't know if you remember but a few years ago there was a whole story out on the internet about how um one of the medical students like took a picture of the woman giving birth and was like, oh, you know, learning how to help people give birth and stuff. And the woman was like, um, my whole coochie is out there now. No, I don't like, remember. Uh, remember, why? remember that don't, at all. Yeah, it was a long time ago. OK. Um, So definitely not. <laughs> I, if, you know, some people are OK, like whatever. Other people are like, no, I'd rather not have 11 medical students yeah. watching me give birth, which is what happened to me. Mm -hmm. I had so many people in that room. I didn't know what was going on. And I couldn't even, I was in so much pain. And again, like the epidural was not doing anything good for my brain. Yeah. Um, that I, it just, I couldn't even be like, no, I don't want all these people in here. So yeah that's something to think about that nobody ever prepares you for. Yeah. That's another thing too. Just one more point before we go. <laughs> While you're in the delivery room, it's very important to designate at least one person that can speak for you. If you cannot speak for yourself. Yes. But I told, I told my nurses that both my mom and Dylan could speak for me because they both knew what I wanted. Yeah. And we were all three on the same page, but it is very important imperative that you have somebody that can speak for you if you cannot speak for yourself that way if something goes wrong god forbid yeah you think happens everybody knows the plan yes um don't let that person be somebody that wants something different than you exactly <laughs> like if um, you want an epidural and that person says no epidural for whatever reason don't let them speak for you tell the nurses yeah, this person cannot body. control what i'm doing like that guy um the nurses wouldn't let that happen anyway. Right. Too. But like there was um a girl that gave birth and this was on like a TV show mm -hmm. and she wanted an epidural and her boyfriend, not even like husband, not fiance, just boyfriend because they, they were kids. Mm -hmm. Um, He said, no epidural. It's my baby. And she goes, it's my fucking body. I want an epidural. But she, I, I don't know what happened with that. I haven't seen the show, but I've just seen like little clips on TikTok and I'm like, I would have beat that kid's ass. Oh my God. I think his name is Jason. Don't ever let a Jason tell you what to do. Coming from a, a girl whose a dad's name is Jason. Jason. God, I'm. Don't ever let a Jason tell you what to do. Beat his ass. Beat, Knock his teeth in. Beat oh. his ass. If his name is Jason, he probably needs it. <laughs> Just saying. On that note, uh, that's all the time we have today. Yeah, we should skid skid ski dad. We should skid mark. <laughs> I'm so sorry. We should skid. Oh my god, we're gonna skedaddle. You guys have a good, uh, have a good birth. <laughs>
I'm just going to start saying that to people, even men, instead of saying, okay, bye, see you, have a good night. I'm going to say, have a good birth. <laughs> Hope that goes men. well for your dingling. <laughs> Put the whole baby out of there. Your dingling. Oh my God. All right. All right. Toodles, noodles. B. Hey guys, uh, just because we forgot to include this earlier in the podcast, we do have an email. Um, so if you would like to submit your own birth stories, um, have any questions for us, would like us to elaborate on something, please feel free to email us at the ditzy chicks podcast at gmail.com. No spaces, all lowercase. It's literally just the podcast name followed by the word podcast at gmail.com. Um, I know at least for Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and um, Spotify, and Spotify for podcasters, I will have that linked in the description below. But as of for our YouTube, um, I cannot do that as of quite yet. Um, so yeah, that's all I had. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, night, whatever. Um, have a good one, guys.